From the campus studios of Saarland University, this is Ropecast, a lighthearted podcast for learners of English, with Roger Charlton and Peter Tisha. Hi, Ropecast listeners. This is Peter Tischer, and for the third time in a row, I'm sitting here with Bobby Pernice. Hi, Peter. Hi, how are you doing? Good. Fine. And for the third time, we'll be talking about baby language, caretaker language, or child-directed speech, whatever you want to right. call it, the way mm -hmm. you speak to your children. And I would like to cap off this series with a, let's say, a little bit more difficult topic. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, what do you say to your children when something goes wrong or when things happen that are maybe not that nice or that, well, that are smelly or whatever? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> let's start with something when things go wrong. For example, when a child falls down. What do you say? Owie, ouchie. They have an ouchie. This kind of thing, yeah. Mm -hmm. Ah, okay. And um, boo-boo, naturally. Boo -boo? Do, you, do you have a boo-boo? Yeah. Okay, yeah. so an ouchie yeah. or a boo-boo would be mm -hmm. the wound. That's or right. The, or the whatever they have, yeah. or yeah. scratch. The injury, whatever the injury it is. Mm -hmm. that they that they have on their, on their arm. In fact, even the child itself, once it gets talking, would say, ouch. Yes, of course. Ouch. Yeah. You can't say, ouch. Um, no, I think they start with ouch. Ouch. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. Because curiously enough, we tend to think that every language uses the same word. Well, you're thinking of awa. Awa in, in for German, in I every language. That, mm -hmm. And in fact, it's not true, right? Yeah, no, it's, it no, all, it isn't. I know the French say ai. Ah, okay. Say, so so it's, it's different in, mm -hmm. in, in every language. You'd think this is a universal thing for all people, but it's not. It's not, it's, no. It's, it's even, that, even that is language. Yeah. I remember um, one daughter, um, she must have been 15 or 16, and I had always called when they were little the Bepantine that every stocked yeah. medicine cabinet has. When they were little, I always called it boo-boo cream. I'll boo -boo get the boo-boo cream. cream, I'll put it on, and one of my daughters at the age of 16 or 17, I think, scratched herself and came to me without thinking and said, Mama, do we have boo-boo cream? And then <laughs> heard herself, you know, this, you know, grown young oh woman and God, said, yeah. oh, I mean, disinfectant. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, I can't say that to a child. Say disinfectant, honey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I think before they fall, you or when they are falling, you say, oops. Oops, oops. or oopsie daisy. Oopsie daisy. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. yeah. Oopsie. Uh huh. Okay. Yeah. Oopsie again with the diminutive sort of e sound on the end. Right. We we already yeah. said that. That's yeah. that's kind of a common thing. Mm -hmm. Before we started taping, you told me that this even plays a role in a movie. Ah, Notting Hill. Notting Hill. A lot of people will probably know it. An exchange between Hugh Grant and Julia Roberts about uh -huh. Oopsie Daisy where he automatically says it when he stumbles or something and she thinks that's hilarious and okay. really rags him about it. And he doesn't know, really know the world type of character, yes, right? Yes, that's right. And that that's right. Sort of and he denies it. that he said it. She said, you said, oopsie daisy. And he says, no, I didn't. <laughs> I did not. And then he stumbles and says it again. <laughs> then so the it does not only happen bag. to your daughter. <laughs> no, <laughs> of course to not. Yeah. <laughs> um, another thing. What do you say to children when something is disgusting? Ah, icky. That's icky. Yeah, icky. So if you yeah. want them to For get... For small children. For yeah. small children. So that's... That's icky. Icky. Mm. Uh -huh. Yuck is for... Uh, Yucky. 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 Uh, yuck is for adults or... No, I think... No, yuck is, is an exclamation. It's an exclamation. That if you see it yourself. Okay. So you wouldn't say to somebody, so that's you yuck, have the but that's the exclamation. And then, then you make an adjective out of yes, it. Yes, that's right. It's, it's yucky. It's, it's yucky. It's yucky. Okay. That's very American, I think. Yeah. Yeah, that's... You, yeah, you don't I think, don't think a British speaker would say yucky, no. Okay, I'll have to ask Roger when he right, gets right. back on the show if yeah. he knows or if, if that sounds very American mm -hmm. to him. Speaking of yucky, we might consider that things children produce are kind of yucky when you have to yes. change their diapers. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, to sort of take the edge out of those things, there are things that Germans will use. For example, Germans will just say ah-ah. Uh ah-ah, -uh. uh -uh. yeah. Once they're, the diapers are full, mm -hmm. uh, is there anything of that kind? Well, I didn't use them myself. You I didn't. have to say consciously, but uh -huh. poopy, poo poo, kaka, uh -huh. kaki, uh -huh. these are all for, yeah. I, I'm, you did not use them? No, I didn't. I, I stuck to bowel movement. 
I have to say I did. For urine, I said pee pee. Uh -huh. Somehow it, it didn't bother me, but the phrases for the bowel movements, personally, I just found distasteful and, and stuck M to. More distasteful than I did. the usual. Yes, for me personally, I always said bowel movement. Uh -huh. Yeah. Oh, well, did you say that to your kids? Yes, too? of course. Yes, yes, yes. You, you sure. Had, I think you had a bowel movement. Yes. You said that to, to your. Of course. I have to change I your did. diapers. I did. Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> I think that would sound even formal to an adult, wouldn't it? They'll just say, "I'll have to go to the bathroom." <laughs> I think it would be interesting to interview parents, people with medical backgrounds. I mm -hmm. think tend to not use only baby terminology for that mm -hmm. kind of thing. Okay. Yeah, or maybe even for parts of the body, they might be more likely to stick, at least in part, to okay. the standard terminology. Yeah, yeah, that might be. I mean, it's you have a different attitude towards did these it, things. I must say, with my kids, also for the genitals, I did not use any diminutives at all, uh -huh. ever, okay. because I but, felt but like there it was are too such coy. Things. Of course, there are. Yeah, uh -huh. but I felt it was a bit too coy with children, and it, it's better to just teach them the right terms and. Ah, okay. So, they always use that. so let's just put a few of those on the website for the benefit of those uh, who want to read about it, what mm -hmm. they're called. Because again, those things cannot be found in any textbook. That's right. Yeah. Uh, usually, mm -hmm. because people do not consider them worth learning. Although a lot of people will have to talk to little children, uh, even as foreigners. Naturally, that's, then they that's have to do their best. Yeah. <laughs> and because uh, I notice when I talk to little children, they'll tell me little things, and I said. What are you saying? <laughs> what is that? I never yeah. had that in my English class. Right, <laughs> it's, right. it's, it's kind of weird. We yeah. don't teach those things in English classes. That's true. That's true. These children are not equipped for adult life right. until they, yeah. Right, right. Okay, so thank you very much, Bobby, for being on the show. Thank you. Telling us a lot of things about your the way you spoke to your daughters or the way fun. Americans speak to their kids. Mm -hmm. You don't speak to them uh, the same way anymore. How no. old are your daughters? Um, 18 and 20. 18 and 20, then maybe we ought to do a show on teenage language one day. Oh, okay. <laughs> but good to have you. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs> See you and hear you all again next time on Ropecast. And if you want to know more about children's language or language, go to www.ropecast.de. Bye-bye. You've been listening to Ropecast, brought to you by Saarland University featuring Roger Charlton and Peter Tischer. Tune in for the next edifying episode on your podcast dial.